The wizard laughed as he pointed to the door and shouted at Glory. <laughs> I've got what I wanted. Now be gone. Tearfully, Glory left the wizard's chamber and wandered through the long halls of the palace, sad and alone. I thought it was bad to be magical in an ordinary world, but to be ordinary in a magical world is even worse. As she rounded a corner, Glory saw someone who looked even sadder than she did. There, by a palace window, sat a young boy gazing out at the bright world beyond. Glory walked up beside him and nuzzled his shoulder. What's wrong? She asked. I thought I was sad, but you look even sadder. Seeing a friendly face, the young boy told Glory his story. My name is Prince Rudolph, and this is my father's castle. Although I am very young, I have already discovered that it's not easy being different from others. Because my father is king, I cannot play with other boys. And people tell me only what they think I wish to hear, and not the truth. I understand what it's like to be different, said Glory softly. Now that the wizard has taken my horn, I have lost my magic. This makes me different from everyone else in your land, too. Prince Rudolph nodded. My father's wizard, Omar, can be a rascal at times. He had no right taking your horn. Unicorns are special creatures and deserve our respect. But do not fear, Glory. I shall help you get your horn back. In that way, I'll be able to prove to everyone in the castle that I'm not just a spoiled child. The wizard seems very powerful, said Glory. Can we really get my horn back? Like everyone else, the wizard has his weaknesses, said the prince. But if we come up with a clever plan, I'm certain we can do it. Later that day, Rudolph and Glory made their way to Omar's chamber. You wait outside until I call your name, whispered the young prince to the unicorn as he turned the handle on the big wooden door and walked inside. Omar rose from his workbench and bowed to the prince. I am honored, my prince, he said. What brings you to this humble servant's chambers? Rudolph was very clever. He had a story ready to fool the old wizard. As you know, Omar, he began, as prince, I have everything I want, but there is one thing I'd like that even my father's power cannot bring to me. And what is that, child? Why, the moon, of course. I see it every night outside my window, but I cannot reach it. Use your magic, old wizard, and get the moon for me, or my father will be greatly displeased. Well, I... Um, the moon, you say? Hmm, that is no small task. But for a wizard as great and as powerful as you, Omar, even the moon must be in your reach, I am sure. Please, great wizard. Do this small thing for me. Small thing indeed, grumbled Omar. Then aloud he replied, I shall have to fly about for a while and think about this. I do my best thinking while I am flying. Glory, glory, come quickly, called Rudolph as soon as the wizard had flown out the window. We haven't a moment to waste. Glory ran inside as Rudolph shouted to her. I found the book of spells the wizard used when he stole your horn. Let me try this one. Spirits of darkness, spirits of light, you who were bid by the wizard's songs, do what is good, do what is right. Place the horn of the unicorn where it belongs. In the twinkling of an eye, Glory's beautiful white horn reappeared on her forehead. She was magical once again. By the time the wizard returned to his room, Glory and Rudolph were already outside the palace on a nearby hilltop. How can I ever thank you for all your help, Rudolph? It is I who should thank you, said the prince as he stroked Glory's shiny mane. When word spreads through the palace of how I tricked Omar, my people will view me in a new light. What a wonderful day it has been. Glory was seeing things in a new light, too. Never again would she regret being different from the other ponies. Her magic made her special, and she liked that. Young Prince Rudolph waved goodbye as his new friend Glory, the magic unicorn, closed her eyes and wished herself home again. <laughs>